As we all know, NASCAR are in heavy discussions with the teams about the next charter agreement, and over the last week, it has become clear that most of the teams have signed the new agreement. However, some teams like 2311 have decided against it and have put their future in jeopardy. So, Denny Hamlin and 2311 Racing's strong declaration puts them on an island after the majority of teams signed NASCAR's new charter contract on Friday night. At the Southern 500 Cup Series race last weekend, 2311 Racing investor Curtis Polk sported a strange placard on his back that read, Please don't question me about my charter. I don't want to disparage NASCAR and lose it. Polk's statement was aimed at the potential inclusion of an anti-disparagement clause in the new agreement. Yeah, it's a threat, Hamlin responded when questioned about the possible provision. That's if you speak negatively. If they don't like what you say, yeah, they're trying to reserve the right. Much of the finer specifics of NASCAR's ownership proposal are kept behind closed doors, but it is evident that NASCAR and its teams have failed to reach an agreement on a new charter arrangement for 2025. Denny Hamlin, co-owner of 2311 Racing, has aggressively leveraged his platform to become one of the most vocal critics of several of NASCAR's plans. On Saturday morning, 2311 Racing issued a statement declaring that it had opted not to meet NASCAR's deadline and, as a result, declined to sign a new charter for the 2025 season that was bound by the plans. Tensions have been high for a time, and they were most evident last weekend when 2311 driver Tyler Reddick won the regular season championship at Darlington. No one from NASCAR's leadership attended the trophy ceremony. You know, certainly, pretty disappointed to not see anyone from NASCAR present Tyler his trophy, Hamlin said. That was a little disappointing. It has resulted in one of the Cup Series' most renowned teams and most outspoken drivers, Hamlin, publicly criticizing the sport's executives. But Hamlin and Team 2311's rejection of the charter has been their most vocal protest yet, and it has put a clear line in the sand that other club owners are unwilling to cross. As part of its reluctance to sign a team charter before NASCAR's deadline, 2311 Racing issued a statement explaining its position. 2311 decided to not meet a NASCAR-imposed deadline last night to sign charter agreements for its two cars for 2025 to 2031. 2311's position, as stated in a letter to NASCAR, is that we did not have an opportunity to fairly bargain for a new charter contract. We notified NASCAR what issues needed to be addressed, in writing, at the deadline. We are interested in engaging in constructive discussions with NASCAR to address these issues and move forward in a way that comes to a fair resolution while strengthening the sport we all love. At 2311 Racing, we remain committed to competing at the highest level while also standing firm in our belief that NASCAR should be governed by fair and equitable practices. It's clear that the team co-owned by Michael Jordan and Hamlin believes it has the power to demand changes. However, these are unknown areas for NASCAR, and it is unclear where 2311 or NASCAR's leadership will go from here. According to Media Day interviews on Wednesday, the two parties appear to be at odds. Hamlin stated that, they keep going in the wrong direction in discussions. There's probably a handful of teams that are just happy to take any deal that they can get, and there's others with some business sense that says this is unreasonable, Hamlin told ESPN. Hamlin says authority views him as a thorn in their side. He provided more insight into the new agreement, describing it as one-sided in favor of the sanctioning authority. I made a good living in this as a NASCAR driver, and I chose to invest back in the France family and NASCAR, says Hamlin. And they are yet to show me an opportunity where I'm going to get that back. According to Fox Sports writer Bob Pachris, Front Row Motorsports has also rejected to sign the deal, but FRM has yet to issue a formal statement. Speaking further about what this new agreement may entail for NASCAR's power structure, Hamlin said, Who's the jury, the judge, and the executioner? It sounds like it's all the same person. It's never been the same person, but now they're proposing that it is. And, as you can expect, some folks are not pleased with the news. They simply want to sign and move on. So, unsurprisingly, those organizations who did not sign received some criticism. Kevin Harvick, for example, had some intriguing ideas on 2311 Racing's refusal to sign NASCAR's new charter agreement. On Kevin Harvick's happy hour, the NASCAR icon discussed the 2311's charter predicament in the early stages of the playoffs. Worst timing ever because it's the most stressful time of the year, Harvick told the audience. You have everything that's going on with the playoffs, you're going into the first round of the playoffs and for Denny Hamlin, he had about as bad of a first round as you could possibly have at Atlanta. Now you got to go to Watkins Glen, 
Oh, by the way, it's all kinds more prep than what you would prep for a regular oval, and then you got to go to Bristol. Sure, he could go to Watkins Glen and win, and he could go to Bristol and win, but now you have all this chaos around you that you didn't have at the same time that you start the most stressful part of the season, it's not ideal. The former Cup Series champion further elaborated on why he believes 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports were surprised the rest of NASCAR's competing organizations signed the deal, and where both teams will have to go from here. I think they obviously expire when they get to the end of the year, Harvick stated. So, you know, I think... I don't know enough about the ins and outs of the strategy that they're trying to employ, but I just can't imagine that they thought that many teams were going to actually sign the charter deals, and you're going to have two teams that didn't sign them. I for sure didn't see front row not signing, but, you know, 2311, I don't know. I don't think that they thought everybody was going to sign them, but it sure made them look like an oddball. You've got to remember, front row is supposedly going to buy that third Stuart Haas, the third car from them will be another charter from Stuart Haas, so it's all very interesting soap opera at this point. Hamlin co-owns 2311 Racing with Michael Jordan, and the team is one of just two NASCAR Cup Series companies that did not sign NASCAR's draft charter agreement, which most owners signed on Friday. Front Row Motorsports is the other team that has not signed the agreement. So what made the other team sign? When asked why he signed NASCAR's new charter agreement, Rick Hendrick was open and honest. According to Jenna Fryer of the Associated Press, the owner of Hendrick Motorsports stated why he signed the new arrangement. I was just tired, Hendrick explained. Other owners, most drivers, and all fans are likely to share this sentiment, given the charter agreement is still in the works. Hendrick was one of 13 owners that signed the new pact before the playoff opener at Atlanta Motor Speedway. According to the Associated Press, teams requested four things from the new charter deal. A higher percentage of money, a voice at the table for governance concerns, a reduction in corporate arrangements with NASCAR that leverage team or driver image, and permanent charters. The latest offer did not include permanent charters, and teams told the Associated Press it was given as a take-it-or-leave-it final offer. Brad Keselowski, the current driver and co-owner of RFK Racing, denied that teams felt forced to join. It's one of these agreements that is only good when everybody's just a little bit jaded, Keselowski said to reporters. I think there's things obviously we would like to have better, but I think to some degree, there's pieces that we really like, and there's pieces not so much. But it's hard to use the word fair. I don't know if I know what that means. According to Fox Sports, clubs have claimed that they deserve a larger share of the rumored $1.1 billion broadcast rights contract with Fox, NBC, Amazon, Warner Brothers, and TNT Sports which spans from 2025 to 2031. Under the previous agreement, teams were paid 25% of the TV money through the race purse, while NASCAR received 10% and Trax received 65%. Prior to the 2024 season, Hendrick expressed optimism that an agreement could be reached pretty soon due to its importance to NASCAR, owners, and circuits. It's just that we need to get it done. And with the most teams signing the new agreement, the future of 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports in NASCAR has never been murkier, even as both organizations seem to be on the upswing. Time will tell when the situation is resolved, but Kevin Harvick and the rest of the motorsports world will be keeping a keen eye on whether an agreement can be reached. What do you think? Will they still sign the agreement? Or will they be able to get a better deal? Or in worst case scenario, leave the sport? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.